And Daniel, you're a fantastic advocate. I mean, in your circumstances, have you ever felt the need to speak with somebody else to get advice so that you can advocate for yourself? So what I would say is if you, maybe you're watching this and you you might be part of the diabetes online community or you might, might be part of a diabetes community, if there's somebody there who perhaps you see or you look up to and you think, oh, they've advocated for themselves well, have a conversation with, with them and find out what they've done. So I have spoken to other people um, to fi find out what they did. Um, in particular, when it comes to me having an insulin pump, a colleague told me, kind of mentioned it to me and was talking to me about getting an insulin pump. But because of that conversation and I'd seen how the insulin pump had helped her, that pushed me to go and do my own research. And when I wasn't sure of certain things, I would ask her for, oh, what what does this mean? Or, or just for advice or, or support. So it is out there. And also, if you do have a good relationship with perhaps your diabetes specialist nurse or your consultant, um, or maybe the nurse, then it might be good to speak to to speak to to speak to them as 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 well and and i would say definitely with with nurses you might find that they may be more approachable than perhaps your your consultant is um and there may be and not all consultants but there may be more of a more of a listening ear with your with your dsn um than perhaps the the consultant so so yeah and um but the healthcare team I know are there to help you as 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 well, um, and I think always remember that they are there to help you. What about if things don't go according to plan? So you've planned, you've prepared. What about if it doesn't go as you would wish? Yeah, of course. Um, so where I've had the consultation, uh, or I've been in a in a in a, an appointment where things haven't gone to plan, it's it's focused around. I've gone into the appointment and instead of seeing me, somebody living with type one diabetes, I've just been seen as what are my numbers on my monitor or what or what my, what's my data? And there's been no question about how I am or how I'm finding things. It's just been give us your give us your your monitor, give us your data, let's look at that. Why is this what and it's just been the focus of of the data. Um and what's happened, and that was where I had appointments like that, and I found that actually I wasn't being listened to, and I was just I was just viewed as numbers. How how I approached that? So at the time, I didn't have the confidence to speak up about it, so I left the appointment. But I was feeling a, a bit like this can't happen again. So when I went to my next appointment and I saw the conversation was going down the ne the other route, I said, well, actually, let's, I don't want to talk about my numbers now. Let's have a conversation about other things and we can get to my numbers. Um, we can eventually get to the numbers. And I think that, again, I remember the reaction was, the kind of, there was a bit of a, a shock that, I've kind of I, I took them off autopilot of sit down, give us your machine, let's see your numbers, let's talk about your numbers. Well actually no, let's talk about something else before we talk about my my numbers. Um and also if you feel comfortable, then say to your team, whenever we have these my appointments, we always talk about my numbers first. I'd like to talk about something else, or I'd like you to ask how I am doing or how I'm finding living with diabetes. And then we can talk about my my numbers, um, and you can always remind them as well that the data just tells me what I need to do next. It's not, um, it doesn't set, it doesn't mean if I'm good or bad. And again, that's another thing that comes into the appointments is the judgment that comes with looking at your numbers as well. And that's another barrier that people have to overcome that I had to overcome um, as well, and just realizing that the numbers just data and telling me what I need to do next. They don't tell you if you're good or bad. Daniel, what does it mean to you to work in partnership with your healthcare team? When it comes to being a partner, it's about people who are there for you in the good times and not so good times. So as much as, yes, 
diabetes is a very, very serious condition. Life does happen. And sometimes life can come before living with diabetes. And so that could be reflected in some of your data that maybe you haven't been on the ball as much as you would like to have been. Or maybe you're in a place where perhaps your diabetes, the management it this is still a work in progress. So, so for me, it's vitally important to be in to, for you to both work as work as partners, and that's what partnership looks like to me. I'm not just being told what to do, but I'm actively involved in the decision making process as well. And what are your three take home points? Because you've given us such a lot of insight and information. What are your three take home points? Yeah. So my my three points would be. Um, so when it comes to advocating for yourself, research, do your research, find out what's out there, find out if there are any changes to the way that diabetes is being managed now. What's what's the newest technology? What do the guidelines say? What are the steps? What are the steps that I need to take in order to get what I need? Definitely do your research. Um, and kind of that then leads on to also knowing what you're entitled to as well. Um, my second point would be don't be intimidated um, by going into appointments and when you're doing something that might not feel natural to you, don't be intimidated. And if it doesn't work how you want it to work the first time, that's OK. Try again. And perhaps if plan A doesn't work, then have a plan B. So as I mentioned, if something doesn't happen or the appointment doesn't go how you want it to go, always follow up afterwards maybe with a phone call or an email um and i guess my my final one and maybe it it it's 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 could potentially cliche but rem i would say as well that your lived experience is just as important as your healthcare professionals qualification because you are living with diabetes, you know what you're going through day in, day out, and your lived experience has to play some part in how you manage the condition and how you're both you're working with your with your healthcare team in order to manage your condition. Um, so don't feel that you're less than because you're not less than at all. You know what what it's like living with diabetes. Thank you, Daniel. That was fantastic. You've given us such insights information into your journey living with diabetes and how that's helped you to develop as an advocate for your condition. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you.